Looking at a map of Europe, the country of Bosnia and Herzegovina certainly looks landlocked, while it's being nearly completely surrounded by its clinging friend Croatia. Bosnia and Herzegovina, however, is not landlocked, but has a short 20km coastline around the town of Neum, bisecting Croatia and cutting off Dubrovnik from the rest of the country. So how did Bosnia and Herzegovina end up with such a tiny coastline? And furthermore, how did Croatia become such a coast hog in the first place? This video is brought to you by… well actually there's no sponsor this time, but there is a Patreon if you want to support the channel yourself, and even get access to videos a few days early. Ah, uh, the Balkans. The region's so messy people will shred you apart in the comments no matter what you say. So, the reason why Croatia has such a long coastline, and why it's seemingly randomly broken up by this little Bosnian strip of land, and why Bosnia and Herzegovina has just this little strip of land at all, dates back way before Yugoslavia or any of that stuff that'll happily skirt around for the sake of not being lit on fire, but actually hints to the drama that unfolded here over the past millennium. Because if you want the short answer, it all has to do with Venice, the Byzantines, and later the Ottomans, and a third independent power, Dubrovnik itself. So you know how Venice had a vast trading empire throughout the Adriatic and Eastern Mediterranean seas? Well, for much of this time, Venice wasn't the only trading republic in the Adriatic Sea, for there was also the Republic of Ragusa, not to be confused with some food YouTuber named Adam. Founded after the merging of a newly founded Roman city on the island of Lausa and a Croatian city on the mainland called Dubrovnik, Ragusa, still called Dubrovnik in Croatian, was initially just another city in the Eastern Roman, or Byzantine, Empire. However, by around the turn of the second millennium, Byzantium's influence started to wane in the region, eventually giving way to the Duchy of Croatia and the Frankish Empire. The area was then bought under Venetian rule following the Fourth Crusade, as Venice used the debt the Crusaders had accrued to invade Dalmatia and bring down the Byzantines, putting much of the region under their hold. Ragusa was under Venetian suzerainty over the next 150 years. Suzerainty, a relation where a dominant state controls the foreign relations of a vassal state but allows the vassal state sovereign authority in its internal affairs, paying tribute to the Republic until Venice ceded its Dalmatian holdings to Hungary under the 1358 Treaty of Zadar. Ragusa then became independent under Hungarian hegemony. As Hungary was not exactly much of a naval power, the Republic of Ragusa grew in importance as a port for trade between East and West, eventually coming to rival Venice itself with their sick trading skills, man! Then who else but the Ottomans showed up, with Ragusa becoming a tributary of the Ottoman Sultan in 1458. Ragusa was allowed to set its own trade policies, as long as they didn't conflict with Ottoman policies, and fly their own flags on their ships. And its association with the Empire opened up major opportunities for the Republic. Ragusa merchants were allowed into the Black Sea, which was closed to non-Ottoman traffic, with the Ottomans also backing them up in diplomatic disputes. Ragusa also turned out to be an important port for facilitating trade between the Ottomans and any kingdoms they were at war with. This meant that the city, once under Venice's suzerainty, now became a fierce competitor of the Maritime Republic. By the 18th century, the Ottoman borders with the Austrian Empire and Republic of Venice started to take the shapes they do today. I mean between Croatia and Bosnia and Herzegovina, not the Ottomans and the… you knew what I meant. The Ottoman Empire suffered a defeat in the Battle of Kalimberg in 1683, and in 1699 under the Treaty of Kalovitz gave up many of their Balkan territories, including Dalmatia, though still maintaining control over Bosnia. So if we take a look at the territories held by the Ottomans, and the territories held by the Austrian Habsburgs and the Venetians, and just add Ragusa in there, and oh my god, I think I recognize those borders. Dubrovnik, however, was still independent, but now shared a land border with the Republic of Venice. Thus, in order to prevent potential land attacks from Venice, Ragusa gave the Ottomans this little strip of land around Neum to serve as a buffer to keep Venice at bay. Because we all know the fearsome land power that was… Venice. So this little strip of land wasn't necessarily intended to give a future Bosnian state access to the sea, which explains not just how small modern Bosnia and Herzegovina's coast is, but also how unhelpful it is. Neum, despite being the country's only connection to the sea, doesn't have a cargo port, and only has a population of around 3,000. Thus, Bosnia and Herzegovina more often use the nearby Croatian port of Ploče, which has a direct rail link to the country. And all of that kind of makes sense if the corridor was only created as a buffer zone to protect Dubrovnik when this part of Dalmatia was under a rival power. 
but now that they're both part of the same country, it's a bit of an awkward arrangement. So wait, how exactly did Dubrovnik end up as part of Croatia then? Well, to see what happens next, let us first play our favorite game, Who Will Rule This Tiny Random Patch of Europe Next? Tonight's patch of land in Europe is the area around Dubrovnik, also known for the past few hundred years as the Republic of Ragusa. And believe me, there has been plenty of fighting over this little piece of Adriatic beachfront. But before we spin the wheel, let us first introduce our six contestants. First up, from the Republic of Ragusa itself, we have Rector Sabo Giorgi. Oh yes, also the leaders of the Republic of Ragusa were called rectors. Please stop snickering. Next up, you know him, you love him, or maybe you don't, Ottoman Sultan Selim III himself. Making a comeback as always, we welcome back the Doge of Venice, Ludovico Manin. Next up is the King of Great Britain himself, King George III. Why, you're still rolling after the American Revolution stuff? Then we have Bolivian President Jose Mariano Serrano, whose country doesn't actually exist yet. I actually have no idea why they're here. And finally, we have a bit of a mystery ruler tonight. Who is this mystery ruler? More importantly, who will rule Ragusa next? Let us spin the wheel and find out. And the winner is... The Mystery Ruler. And let us see who this Mystery Ruler is. Napoleon Bonaparte. Good luck with that. Napoleon swept through the area in 1809, bringing the area under French influence. With the Congress of Vienna in 1815, however, God, I feel like there were a lot of treaties in this video, Ragusa was absorbed into the Austrian Empire, followed by Bosnia in the 1870s. It is at this point, though, that the borders, or at least the borders that matter for this video's titular question, have fully crystallized. Now, even if it'll be another century or so before these countries actually become independent, Croatia has now finished molding into being shaped like a dragon, and what would become Bosnia and Herzegovina would go on to have the second shortest coastline of any country in Europe, right behind Monaco. Oh god, should I continue explaining the history even though it isn't really relevant to our question anymore? Or should I just cut it off here and get to the conclusion? Eh, you know what, the comments are still going to explode anyway. Nowadays, although Croatia is a European Union member, and Bosnia and Herzegovina a potential candidate for becoming one, Croatia is currently undergoing a project to build a bridge across the narrow strait that cuts off Dubrovnik. A bridge which, as my friend IBX Toycat has pointed out, in a sense only makes sense to build because of the politics and history of the region. Geographically speaking, there already are road links between Dubrovnik and the rest of Croatia. Those traveling along it just need to go through border checks. That's why it can be important to ask these questions and learn about these long-gone conflicts and disputes, as they can put our modern world into perspective. We didn't make our modern world out of nothing, after all. So why is Croatia building a bridge that normally wouldn't make any sense to build? Because of thousand-year-old disputes with a city-state that's now part of Italy, and dealings with an empire that no longer exists. And that is why Bosnia and Herzegovina's coastline is so short. Oh, crap, I could have made this video to a short. 